My presentation is entitled uh, Assessing the Impact of the Withholding VAT Intervention in, in, in Zambia. It is uh, uh, like the other studies, a joint um, uh, collaborative study between the Zambia Revenue Authority and the UNU wider. Um, in terms of, uh, well, what I'll talk about, I'll, I'll, I'll give a brief, a brief background, then talk about the method and the data that we use, uh, the objectives, as well as the, the key results and uh, policy insights. In terms of the, the background, uh, well, Zambia, like many other um, developing countries, have uh, large uh, informal uh, sectors. Uh, there's also these these businesses or these sectors are categorized by poor bookkeeping and uh, they usually don't have systems in place systems and controls to record uh, the business transactions and in general these countries are characterized by limited ict systems and uh, interconnectivity of systems there's also generally limited uh, expertise to uncover sophisticated uh, tax avoidance schemes. Hence, um, uh, recently, um, withholding mechanisms have become quite popular in third world countries to, to help address uh, the low compliance that arises from the structural issues in the economies. Uh, I also want to state that uh, in Zambia, uh, VAT is one of the major tax types. I think contributing an average of 25% uh, in the last five years. Um, we have seen um, a gradual increase in nominal terms in VAT collected over the years, over the past decade or so. Um, however, uh, the country still continued to face uh, challenges of um, uh, low return filing um, limited self-enforcement mechanism in the VAT, which is supposed to be inherent in the design of the tax type. Also, under under reporting and misreporting, which was then resulting into a narrowing gap between what we were receiving as the formal claims through the return filing processes, as well uh, against the gross collections that the country was recording. Um, and to help address these anomalies that we were, um, we were observing, uh, we decided to introduce the withholding VAT mechanism in 2017. So the way the mechanism works is that uh, um, certain players in the economy, usually these are large, very large taxpayers in the top 10th percentile of the of the contribution to, to gross revenues, if you want, or contribution to gross domestic product, are selected as uh, withholding agents, including the government and its uh, allied institutions. Then these entities, whenever they deal with um, uh, with suppliers for vertebral sales, they withhold the VAT instead of paying, um, making the payment together with the. Uh, making making the payment together with the VAT. So currently, the withholding rate is at 100% of VAT. The standard um, VAT percentage in Zambia is 100%, sorry, is 16%. Therefore, withholding agents uh, currently withhold 16% um, of the VAT as they are paying uh, those they interact with. And so far, we have uh, slightly over 100 uh, VAT withholding agents, which are um, uh, comprised of um, uh, mining companies, the large mining companies, uh, the commercial banks, as well as uh, the government and its allied institutions like uh, parastatus. I should state that uh, currently in Zambia, um, or over time, we've had an average uh, VAT registered businesses of uh, about 18,000, out of which uh, the active taxpayer population has, is, is now at around 7,000. But before that, it was much lower, before the withholding mechanism especially. This, this active taxpayer uh, population for VAT was much lower than the average we're observing now, which is at 7,000. 
So in terms of uh, what the study was trying to uncover was just to answer the, the questions, uh, which is uh, what is the impact of the withholding mechanism in Zambia after its introduction? Then what is its impact specifically on reported uh, VAT revenues? as well as uh, what is this effect on the behavior of, uh, of these registered entities, especially when we check uh, the behavior of these firms according to location or the sector in which they, the economic sector in which they're operating. Uh, so to effectively answer these questions, the study employed the, the, the diff and diff uh, methodology um, the treatment group was made up of firms whose uh, VAT had been withheld before, while the control group was the, those firms who have never had their VAT withheld. And uh, this was largely, it was concentrated on the small and medium-sized firms, because we know that the, the large firms, like I explained, were already in that category where they were largely formalized, and hence the problem of uh, the disappearing VAT was not so common amongst the large firms. So the study period is uh, 2014 to 2020, and uh, we, we utilized uh, a monthly uh, VAT returns, a detailed monthly VAT returns data obtained from the Zambia Revenue Authority systems. The, the authority, I should mention, that um, uh, digitalized its tax uh, collection system in uh, 2013. And since then, the taxpayers were required to submit detailed transactions uh, up to the invoice number level in, in their VAT returns. Hence, there's this uh, rich micro-level data that is available for, for such a study. Um, in terms of uh, the observations that we're dealing with, um, the VAT, the total VAT returns, which are received on a monthly basis uh, for the period 2014 to 2020, were about 13,000, amounted to 13,309 firms, uh, whereas uh, the firm level uh, withholdings this is now after introduction of the reform in 2017 to 2020. Uh, we had 4,559 uh, 4, unique firms that uh, uh, belonged to the withheld VAT. Uh, so in terms of the treatment sample, we're looking at uh, uh, suppliers who had interacted with withholding agents consisting about consistently of uh, of uh, 4488 firms and the control group uh, had uh, 9200 firms in total we were dealing with about 53000 observations in terms of uh, just uh, a brief on the on the descriptives um i think the majority of the filings were from the wholesale and retail sector which accounted for 43% and then we we saw a spike in the in the count of returns uh, in 2017 and 2018, largely owing to another intervention that uh, ZRA carried out during that period, which was the tax amnesty, where taxpayers were allowed to file their old returns, and uh, their penalties and interest uh, waived. Uh, in terms of the findings uh, from the diff and diff, if you just look at the descriptives, uh, checking whether the parallel trend uh, assumption was holding, um, we, we, we see that uh, indeed it was holding for the variables starting with the total sales, the total output VAT, um, as you can see from the, 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 the red dots indicating the, the the treatment group and the blue dots indicating the control basically we looked at four uh, main um, outcomes here because we observed that these were the um, outcomes that the withholding agents looked at when they interacted with the um, supplier right um, i would show the 
impacts um, here. We realize that there's a significant positive um, effect on these um, outcomes that we looked at. On average, you would see that the reform had about a, let's say, above 10% increase uh, for these outcomes, which are value added, total sales, and then output VAT. We observe a greater um, increase in output VAT, right? So the, the, the difficulty we had here was with um, reported purchases, which is quite ambiguous. Um, we attribute this to the fact that uh, reported purchases by the um, supplier is not directly observed by the withholding agent. So you would see that um, there is a bit of leeway for the um, supplier to misreport purchases because it's not cross-checked by the withholding agent. But all in all, in, the, um, in three out of our four outputs, we observe that there's consistently increased post-reform. Um, right, so we, are, we, we also go ahead to do some um, heterogeneity analysis in respect of um, the location of the firms and then the um, industry where the suppliers are found. And we realize that in those um, regions where you have a concentration of firms, like the, of suppliers, like the Copper Belt and then the um, Lusaka, you would see that we observe um, significant increases in value added and output VAT, although the impact on sales and purchases is not significant, right? So, um, those are the effects in terms of um, the location. In terms of, um, we, do, we do also um, effects on um, the industry, but uh, we don't show this here now. In term, for policy, um, you'd see that Ideally, we can um, conclude that um, the withholding mechanism improves the compliance behavior. When there is a shift in the reporting structure, where now it's not the supplier who's reporting, but now it's the, it's the withholding agent that's, that's um, reporting the tax to the administrative um, authority. And basically, the design accounts for everything. But now the, what we are thinking about is that it should um, take into account administrative and compliance costs because we don't, we don't calculate that here. And this is um, one thing that um, we, should, we should look at. And then also uh, we observe that we should try to localize the incentives here um, where selected regions should have specific um, withholding um, agents, rather than the broad sector withholding agents that we have now in the ZRE. Um, I would stop here and thanks for the blip. Sorry about the blip and then thank you. Thank you.